Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zenata Consulting. Uh, my name is Tyler Colts, and in this video, we're going to be walking through how serialized items and inventory works inside of Zoho Inventory. Um, so before we jump in, I do want to ask if you do find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. Um, and if it sparks any questions or feedback, uh, please leave that in the comment section below. Uh, as we do try to read and respond to each and every one of those on our weekly show, Azaz, aka Ask Zanata Anything About Zoho. So without any further ado, let us jump on in. So here we are inside of Zoho Inventory. Um, and one thing to know is that right out of the gate, uh, serialized inventory tracking is not turned on by default. Um, not everybody uses it. So we're going to want to turn that on. Uh, so up here in the top right under the little settings cog, we'll jump in there and we'll go to preferences. Now, preferences breaks down into a ton of subsections over here on the left. Uh, the only place we need to go is into items. And down here under advanced inventory tracking is where we can enable the serial number tracking inside of Zoho inventory. There is kind of one caveat with this is that you kind of either track the serial numbers on an accounting basis, meaning based on invoices or bills, um, or you can track it on a physical basis, right? So tracking it based on packages and receipts. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to do this on the accounting basis. So invoices and bills will be where we assign the serial numbers for a particular sale. Um, but just know that you could do this same thing on a physical basis using packages. Really just depends on your workflow and at what point it makes sense for you to assign serial numbers. So I'm going to jump over back to our homepage and we're going to create an item here that is going to be tracked with a serial number. So I'll go ahead and click new. I'll create a serialized item example. Give it a SKU and a unit. Now, a couple things for items that are going to be serial tracked. Um, they are going to need to be purchase and inventory tracked items. So it can't just be a simple kind of sales only item if you want to assign the serial numbers. So I'm just going to fill in some kind of arbitrary data here. We'll say we sell it for 100, we buy it for 50. Under our inventory tracking, we're going to assign it a yes here for track serial number. And go ahead and put it in any old inventory account. And what it's going to ask us to do is essentially say, well, what do you have right now, right? At time of creating this item, what do we have in inventory? So I'm going to imagine we have five items and we bought all of them for 50 bucks each to match our cost price. So it's going to do this silly thing where when I try to save it, it'll do a pop up here that says serial number can't be left empty. And then you scroll down the page and go, well, where do I put that? Um, it's actually hidden under these three little dots. So we'll need to essentially say for each warehouse where we have stock, which serial numbers do we have there? Right. So I'm just going to put in five of these nice and easy. Very basic serial number strategy here. Just one, two, three, four, five. Obviously, those can be any values that you actually have right for your inventory. So I'm going to save that. And now we'll see I have my serialized item example and we have our set of serial numbers. And we'll come back to this a little later, but this page is actually kind of nice for being able to track the movement of serial numbers through transactions. Alrighty, so now that we've created that item and we've added our initial set of serial numbers, we're going to go ahead now and kind of process the sale so we can see where that serialization actually takes effect. So I'm going to create a sales order here. Uh, mostly for the purposes of demoing the fact that you do not assign the serial numbers to the sales order, right? So it kind of makes you pick, right? You're either going to assign them when you invoice for a sales order or when you create a package for a sales order, but we can't quite assign them yet. So I'm going to save and confirm this. We're going to skip this here for now. And now we have that sales order. So it's our confirmed sale. And as we talked about, we can create, you know, the accounting side as an invoice, the physical side as a package. I'm going to show the invoicing side here for right now. So go ahead and convert this to an invoice. And now we'll see as I'm converting this to an invoice, I have my select serial numbers. 
So because I sold one, it's going to expect that I add one serial number to this. You can scan barcodes here. So if you're going to do this in a warehouse, right, you could have the barcode scanner connected and, you know, scan it right in. For me, I'm just going to manually select that we have that one that has now been invoiced. You know what? I'm going to save and mark this as sent because this is not a real customer here. And now we have actually associated that serial number um, with a sale. So if we jump back over to our item, our serialized item example, and we look at the serial numbers, we now see that that one is no longer available, right? It's no longer something that we can actually sell. Now we can still pull up the history of it, right? So that we can see when it came in from an opening balance, and we can see that it went out on an invoice. So now kind of the other side of the process is when you're purchasing an item that is serialized. And so for here, I'll go ahead and create a purchase order. So pretty similar to what we did before. So I'm going to go kind of quick here. We'll buy it from a vendor. Let's say we're buying our serialized item. Now, again, as we talked about, we're not going to see any place to notate the serial numbers here on the purchase order. So I'll go ahead and save this. And I'll just mark it as issued, right? Because I'll demo data here. So now, similar to when I convert the sales order to an invoice, I get my serial numbers. Um, it's the same thing here, right? So when I convert my purchase order to a bill, I now have the ability to track which sales orders I'm receiving or paying for, I should say, when it comes to billing. Uh, I want a bill number. Put that in. So now we have our bill, you know, let's say that we record payment for this just to, you know, pay our bills on time. Now let's go back to that item and see the effect. Under the serial numbers, we now have item number six, right? And we'll see the difference here is that this came in from a bill on a particular date, rather than these are saying basically, you had this at the time you added the item. We don't know which purchase order or bill it came from. So all those different serial numbers can just be tracked here inside of the item and then associated with those various transactions along the way. At the tail end of the process, right, you're always able to come back in and see that whole process for a particular uh, serial number. That includes if there's returns, credit notes, things like that, that make it kind of come back in the inventory. You'll see all of that kind of roll up directly here inside of the item page. So with that, I think we've covered kind of the core elements here of serialized inventory tracking. Again, Main steps are turn it on inside of settings, pick if you want to track based on accounting records or physical records, um, create your item and assign those initial serial numbers, and then essentially track the sales of those numbers on invoices, as well as the purchases on bills. Um, so I do hope this video was helpful for you. Um, if it was, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really helps us out and make sure that YouTube shows you future videos that we put out just like this one. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.